geofords and pending moment diagram. Okay, so what's what are these? Well, if you so here's an okay our concept. So let's take a simply supported beam. So one end is is hinged. One set is on a roller, and uh, let's say it's subject to a force. Okay, so. If you are supposed to, if you are trying to um, understand the loads on this beam, the first thing we'll do is draw a free body diagram, which will be essentially the, the beam without the supports. And then we'll uh, okay, then we'll solve for the reaction forces just like we did earlier. So VA and VB. Okay, now there is an H also, but that is equal to zero, right? H A equals zero because it's um, there's no loads in the horizontal direction. So V A, if you solve for V A and assuming that this point P is the force P is midway, then V A is going to be P divided by two and V B will be P divided by two, such that if you sum them up, they equal uh, the force P. Now, this is the load. So what we're interested here in this Part shear force and bending moment diagram is what exactly is the force and the moment at a randomly chosen section. So what's going on here? So what's going on here is at some section is that if you take this beam now and cut it into two, Okay, so that cut is there. Then what you'll see is that uh, this part, the left part is going to be, have some uh, shear force, it's called that V, and it's going to have a moment in, okay? Because internally, there should be something acting there because this beam is subject to load. And then we know by Newton's laws, that is the third law, which says that every action is an equal and opposite reaction, there should be an equivalent force on the other side and a moment of the same magnitude, but opposite direction. So that's what is going on at a cut. So there is a moment and there is a shear force. If there's a moment and a shear force, there's going to be a stress. And that stress is the one which we care about because that stress can lead to potentially failure. Now, where is this, this important is that what when people make these beams, sometimes they want to, or, or let's say they want to repair this beam, they'll basically perhaps cut the beam. Okay, so they may be cutting the beam uh, this way, and then they have another beam like this, and then they will have a process to join these two parts of the beam by using some, uh, some something, right? Could be some kind of uh, adhesive. I just put glued. And this part is going to be the part which is going to be now the critical part because that's where that's the weakest part of the beam. And that's where you can expect that things will break and crack. So it's kind of important for us to figure out what the stress, uh, the weakest link. So it's important for us to figure out what the stress is at this weakest section. Sorry. Uh, because once we figure out that, stre uh, that uh, stress, we can then uh, make recommendations on how much load this new element now, which is which is made out of two beams, which are cut joint can actually sustain, right? And so finding the stress now means that we first need to know the shear force and bending moment in order to find the stress. So as I said, our, so this is what, this is where we're going, which is, so we have reaction forces. Okay, which come from free body diagram. So I like that as, uh, let's call it Fx 
FYM. These will give us um, bending moment and shear force diagrams. Bending moment. Shear force that's denoted that by M and V, and these eventually will give us stresses. Okay. So this has been done. This is in this section. We'll talk about it in a bit, and this is going to be the next few sections. And then we want stresses because this is what. This is what drives the design. An example of this was what we taught in the what we talked about in the first class, where if you remember, we talked about factor of safety. The factor of safety depends on the strength of the beam or that material, and then it depends on the stress at a particular location. That stress is pretty much this one, which we'll be computing, but we can't do that unless we do the first part. So this part is going to focus on um, M and V, the shear force and bending moment diagram. Okay, so before we do that, here are the different types of uh, uh, forces we'll be considering in beams. There'll be concentrated forces, which we've seen uh, before. An example would be a beam, let's say a simply supported beam. The so one side we put a roller. Another side we put a, a pairing. So this is a load P. So that's an example of a concentrated load. Uh, there's one force acting at a point and could be multiple forces. The second one is a distributed load. So here we would have the same beam, but the force now can be best represented as something like this. So this is W. The units of the force are Newtons but the units of the distributed loads are Newton per meter. So it's like a, it's, you can think of it like, um, uh, if you can think in terms of sort of like density, where if you take density and you multiply by volume, you get the mass here, instead of, have it, instead of being per, per unit volume, it's per unit length. So that if you multiply it with the length at which it acts, it gives you the force. And the final one is moments is easier to understand. It's just uh, a torque. So like this. Okay, and so what this is saying is that you can take any uh, machine element, could be a mechanical application or civil application, and idealize them as either a P or a W or an M. And you pretty much, we, that's pretty much what we do. We just idealize them as these forces. And once we have these forces, and once we have the kind of reaction forces, we can then go ahead with free body diagrams. Now, here are some important formulas, which I will not derive, but are nevertheless important when we draw shear force bending moment diagram. Uh, let's define a few things. Q is the load intensity. Uh, v is the shear force. M is the bending moment. Okay, all these things are related by uh, calculus. So here are the expressions. The shear force is the rate of change of the bending moment with respect to distance. So if you take, for example, a V that is force and you multiply with dx, and you with the other side, you get moment, right? Moment is force times distance. Uh, Q, is the rate of change of shear force. Uh, so Q is actually similar to W, right? Q, the units of W is force per unit length. 
you can see that the units of Q is also force per unit length, X being uh, distance. Uh, you can also write it as, so V is dm dx. So if you sub in V in this equation for Q, then you can get an expression relating Q and M. So it's the second derivative of M. Okay, so those are two equations which are central to shear force and bending moment diagram. Okay, and then uh, another way of looking at these equations is, is to actually, is to integrate these equations. And those are useful sometimes when you draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. Okay, so the integrated versions of this is, all you do is you integrate that. So you move the dx around, so v dx, and you integrate this from uh, two points. So let's say that the region of interest goes from A to B, like we have. It could also go to some intermediate points, so A and B. When I integrate this, I'll have m b minus m a equals integral v dx uh, A to B. Here, uh, A and B denotes typically the distance because you're integrating about um, the length, right? On the right side, but on the left side, integrating with respect to the moment. Okay, another equation which you can get by integrating the, um, the second equation. So this one is a similar recipe. You take dx to, to Q and then integrate with respect to the distance, you get V B minus V A integral V B A uh, Q dx. Okay, so a few minutes left. I'm going to set up uh, the part of the, the algorithm to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram, and I'll leave it at it. And then next class, we will actually solve some problems where we'll, we'll find the shear force and bending moment diagram, uh, and then use those to, um, to solve the problem. So let's, this is how you will go about drawing shear force and bending moment diagram. Um, Professor, can you go back yeah. to the sure. last? Sure. Just have to copy down one thing. Can you... All right, I'm good to go. Thank you. So, drawing here force and bending moment diagrams. Okay, so first step is uh, essentially draw a free body diagram, like we've done before, assign a coordinate frame, This is just to ensure that your reaction forces are in the direction which you uh, are showing and then compute the reaction forces slash moments. So you could have a reaction moment to remember that there was a, a for a fixed support you have M's. So those would be summation F X equals zero, summation F Y equals zero, and then summation M equals zero. So here at this point, you've already done, this is something which you've already done in the, in the, in the previous uh, few uh, parts of the class, right? So we've already drawn free body diagram. The additional step here is, then we need to compute shear force slash bending moment 
And usually we'll do it one at a time. We'll first do only shear force, only winding moment. And then later, at every location of the beam, using these equations, which I just wrote down, using these equations. So the equations are, well, one of them is V equals Vm dx and Q equals dV dx. Now, when I say every location, it seems a little bit daunting, every location. So in principle, you only need to, uh, th so there are tricks. to avoid computing Vm at each location. And I'll talk about those tricks later on. The key thing is to, to see how does the V and M ch uh, change as a function of Q and V and use that to basically do this computer for a few places. So we'd only do this for like three or four places actually in principle, uh, even though um, it says at every location. So I'll stop here. So we have a beam. We let's say we cut the beam um, in the middle. Okay. Now, when we we'll see that when we draw this shear force bending moment diagram, we'll either go from the left to right or right to left. So. If you go from left to right, then our convention is going to be something like this. We're going to assume that positive is for, for V is downwards on the left side and positive on the right side is upwards on the right side. Okay. And this will might be a little confusing, but it will be clear once I solve problems. The other convention we have for M is that anything which is counterclockwise on the left side is positive, and anything clockwise on the right side is positive. Okay, and we'll stick to uh, this particular convention. In fact, we just simplify our life by not doing left, right, because it's confusing navigating from uh, using one or the other one. We'll just stick to one in which we always move from the left to right. So we'll only be using the convention shown on the left side. This is left, this is right. So we'll pretty much use this one, okay? But you are free to do the same thing uh, on the right side and you'll see that the answers are the same. Okay, so let's uh, apply what I wrote down into a problem. and then we'll add some loads. So so that's that's say fifteen kilonewton, and somewhere middle is. nine or six kilonewton. Okay, and these lengths are about the equidistant. So this is two meters, two meters, two meters. Okay, so given a beam like so, the question is draw the shear force and bending moment 
diagram, which another, which really means that we need to draw V versus X. And then that will be M against X, where X is pretty much the distance along the beam. So as I said, we can start from left to right, or right to left, we'll always do from left to right, where we'll, this point is for us zero comma zero. So we'll go from there to the right. Okay, so how do you solve a problem like this? So using the, the sort of the recipe I wrote down in the in my previous page, we'll follow this one through four and pretty much do it. So first, first three parts are something we've seen before, that is drawing the pre-bar diagram and computing the reaction forces, but you have to do that for every problem. So let's get started with these steps. So step number one, I'm gonna draw a free body diagram. So we replace the effect of the pin joint at A with uh, two forces, one in the vertical direction, one in the horizontal direction. So B A H A. And on B, we have only a vertical force because it's a roller joint. And now we can draw the other forces, 15 K N and six K N. Okay, so that's our free body diagram. Next second step is to assign a coordinate frame. So that's step two, X, Y. The third step is to invoke the equations of static equilibrium, which are summation of forces in the X direction is equal to zero. So in this case, it's kind of trivial, but HA is zero. Uh, summation of forces in the y direction is equal to PA, which is upwards. So our convention is positive y uh, is, uh, if VA is points in the positive y direction, it's positive. So plus VA minus 15 minus six plus BB equals zero. So that can be simplified and written down as VA plus VB equals. 21. Okay, next, since we have still have two unknowns there, A and B, let's try to invoke the moment equation. Okay, and we write the moment equation. We are free to choose whichever point we want to take the moments about. Let's do this about A because there are two forces there and putting that effectively eliminates those forces. Now it's this case we know HA, so really there's no real advantage of doing A over B in this case. But if, for a more complicated problem, you might be it might be beneficial to choose the point with the most number of forces, which are unknown. Okay, so moment at A. So we have uh, VA, which doesn't create a moment because it acts at A. Then we have 15 kilonewton, which is at a distance of two meters from A, and you can see that. 15 would apply a force in the, or a moment in the clockwise direction. And our convention is clockwise is negative. So I'll put a negative there. Similarly, the six kilonewton force, it acts the distance of two plus two, four, and that will also be similar, right? It should be a clockwise moment. So it'll be a negative sign. Okay, similarly, we can reason out that the, moment due to VB uh, acts at a distance of six meters from A. And since it's upwards, it will induce a positive moment. So all that should equate to zero. Okay, and this means we need to just solve for VB, get so it's 30 plus 24 divided by six. That should be a uh, nine kilo Newton. It's nine kilo Newton because our forces in this case are all in kilonewtons. So you solve for VB. 
9 kn. We can solve for Va. It's going to be 21 minus 9, which is 12. So how did I get this? Well, I used this equation right here. Okay, so we've done with step three, and now is the point which is going to come to the point where we are drawing the shear force and bending moment. So let's do that. Okay, now when, you, when you're drawing the shear force and bending moment diagram, it works to your advantage to draw them side by side. And that's because uh, you will need to use one of them, that is the shear force diagram to draw the bending moment diagram. So I'll just draw them side by side. Let's divide this page. Okay, so I'm going to draw the beam again. And now show all the reaction forces because we'll be using those to compute the shear force. So on the left side, we had VA and VA was computed to be 12. We had 15 next. Then nine, or oh sorry, six. And then there was an upward uh, force of nine, which was a reaction force. So we are now uh, going to use step four, which is these equations, right? Uh, and basically follow this kind of uh, convention, which is we are going from left to right. So our convention is positive V is downward. So what we need to do is we pretty much want to draw uh, uh, the beam like so by cutting the beam at different locations, right? So remember I said that you need to do that at every location, but there are some tricks which ensures that you don't have to do it quite at every location. The trick is to look at where the force changes. So in this case, the force changes at A, Let's call this, well, this is B. Let's call this C and D. So the force changes at C and A, C, D, and B. So you only need to do cuts before C, uh, between A and C, between C and D and, and, and D and B in order to draw the shear force diagram. So what we'll do is we'll cut the beam first at between A and C. And when we cut that, we'll put the force at A. Now, since it's cut before between A and C, there's going to be a unknown reaction force, which we'll show with our convention, which is we're going to assume it's uh, downwards because a convention is downwards is positive. So once we have this down, we only need to write the equation of equilibrium. So we have minus 12 and it's minus now because our convention is anything on the left side is uh, positive downwards, but 12 kilonewton is upwards. And so it's negative and then plus B. And so we need to equate that to zero, which gives us that the shear force between this point, any, any point between A and C is actually 12 kilonewtons. Okay, so we'll put all that together in a diagram a little bit later. Let's just keep moving on we, uh, to the sir. section between C and D. Uh, now we'll show the reaction forces at A, at C, and then uh, the unknown is right where we cut the beam. So we need to put a reaction force equation. Uh, no, I couldn't hear us. Hello, hello. I couldn't hear you. Somebody was trying to talk. 
Uh, hello? You, you can unmute yourself. Uh, I am, I am okay, unmuted. So see what I can do. <clears throat> my, this is, might be my settings here. Can you try talking now? Maybe change something. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hold on. Uh, can you can can you try to speak now? Yeah, Hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. It's, so it was okay. My Zoom awesome. Yeah. No worries. Uh, so should it V equal negative twelve? No, it should be positive twelve. Because I'm thinking up is positive, down is negative, and we have twelve going up and V going down. Think think of it like a reaction force, right? It needs to be in the direction shown in order for this to be in equilibrium. So V is a sort of a reaction force. If you cut the beam right here, what's the force at that section so that this thing is not going to move? Because if V was upwards, then it will fly off upwards. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, they think of, yeah, so. So you just need to find like the opposite force to balance it out basically, right? Right, yeah. Think of, yeah, that's a good point. This, is, this gets a little confusing here. Think of V as a reaction force. Okay, so now we have, with this new uh, diagram between C and D, we have minus, 12 upwards plus 15 downwards, and then plus V downwards all equals zero. And so solving for V, we get minus D. Okay, let's keep going between um, now D and B. So keep, cut it between D and B, put all the forces, 12, 15, Six, and the V is the unknown, right? The equation of our equilibrium, which is minus 12 plus 15 plus six plus V equals zero. And then solving for V, we should get 12. So it's 21 minus 12, which is nine, but you take it on the other side, so it should be minus nine. Okay. Okay, so with all that information, we can we are now all in a position to draw the shear force diagram. So let's draw. But uh, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but yeah. I just yeah. want to should ensure BB pointing the other direction. It's negative. It should be going up instead of down. No, but we are drawing. Yeah. We are drawing this between here, right? So B is, we are not still at B. We are little before B. We are between D and B. So you will see that so if, if you want to, so what happens is eventually if you draw the whole beam, this, then, so let's draw the whole beam. And then, oh, sorry, a better way to think of it is this way perhaps. So we have this beam on the, let's look at the cut from the right side. So we have, that's uh, nine. And then this, since this V is uh, downwards on the left side should be upwards. Okay, but so now we have V uh, plus nine equals zero, but V is minus nine so that that means that this equation is satisfied. So it's not going to fly off in the air, the right side. So it's consistent. Does that make it clear? Yeah, this, the way that I'm just thinking about it is like there's 12 going up and then 15 plus six going down. So like in order to balance the beam, like we would need V to go up for it to like balance. That's the way I'm like seeing it. 
Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. So yeah, so in reality, this V is actually this way. But you know, as I said, you you start with the convention, you start assuming ah. V, and then if it gives you a negative sign, it just means that you assumed incorrectly, and so the actual V is is you're right, it's upwards. Okay, uh, cool. but Thank you. I, I don't advise you to do that because for some people it gets so confusing. If you if you start assuming the, you know, you start assuming this way, and then you get some answer, and then to to interpret that becomes a little hard. So I just say just stick to whatever v direction you want, and the sign will actually tell you how it goes. Right. So, yeah, so if it's, it's negative, it's just the opposite direction. Like I get, right. I get it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. If I asked you. A question like, what is the magnitude of V and its direction between D and B? The correct answer is it's nine upwards. Okay, so that's that's what you would say uh, eventually. But you can you can do it your way, which is you start assuming the right direction, or you could do it this way, where you start assuming in the wrong direction, and then the answer tells you that it's upwards. So let's uh, now. Final step, draw the shear force right now. So V versus X. Means here. So let's draw the key points, which are this one, C, uh, about here for D and then B. So B, D, C, and A. So uh, between so between A and C, we saw that the force is 12. So we just draw, uh, let's say that this is 12. And then stays 12 till we hit um, this point C, where it goes down, dips to minus three. And then it stays minus three till we reach uh, D, where it is now minus nine. So we go a little bit more down. And then at B, we have, we see that the nine, this nine on the right side, equalizes the nine, which is downwards, to give a net V at B equal to zero. So it, in fact, it will always end up with zero and zero. Unless there is, uh, yeah, it should always end up with zero and zero on both ends. So that would be the shear uh, shear force diagram. Now the bending moment diagram is slightly bit more involved because now we need the information from the shear force diagram, which we'll be doing shortly. So let's move on to the bending moment diagram. Again, I'll do the same recipe, which is keep using sections, and then for each sections we will write the equations of equilibrium. Okay, so let's start off with well, I, I'll fix it later on. I accidentally deleted the one on the left. So let's um, let's do the same thing for the left for the left side to the right side. So start off with a section from A to C. 12. Now, when we draw this, what we need to do is we need to show V as well as M. V, our convention is positive is downwards. So I'll stick to that. Counterclockwise is positive. And uh, let's assume that this distance, which we're considering, is X from the left. Our convention is 0, 0 is on the left, right here. It's 0, 0. So X is from the left, measured from the left. So now, with that, let's write the equation of equilibrium. Uh, this would be the moment equilibrium. So we have, so we, when we take moments, we are taking moments about this point.
let's call it uh, no no uh, p prime or let's say p so moment about p should be equal to zero and so let's write what that moment is so m is uh, counterclockwise so it's positive v passes through p so it will not have a, a bending moment so that's zero and then we have 12 acting at a distance of x from p and that as you can see produces a clockwise moment so i put a negative sign because it's opposite to our convention, which is counterclockwise positive. So that all equals zero. And so this gives us M equals 12 times X, which is saying that the moment from A to C is going to vary linearly with uh, the distance X. So we have to keep doing this exercise for the other parts. Let's draw the section that's a cut, put a cut between C and D, show all the forces. So we have 12, 15, and then we would have P, M. Okay, so this, so you can think of this as a free body diagram in, in some senses with the cut. Now, again, we can choose this to be X. Okay, because our x is always measured from the left side. And uh, now our p is this new point, which is where the cut is, call that p. Okay, so let's write down the equation of equilibrium now about p. So m p equals m again counterclockwise, so it's easy. Uh, 12 is going to be clockwise, so 12 times x, since then, X changed here to be between C and D, that won't change. Uh, however, when you write the moment for 15, we have 15 times the distance. Now, if you remember the distance between here to here from 12 to 15 is two meters. So all I need to do is I need to subtract two from X, X minus two. And since this 15 is producing a moment in the counterclockwise direction, right? it's this way about point P, I need to put a positive sign. So all that equals zero. So I can simplify this. Professor, can you put, explain why did you put positive in front of 15? Sure. So let's take this. This is P, this is 15, about P. This would be 15 x minus 2. It will be, you can see this arrow is the way in which the 15 would rotate the beam from this point to act where it acts to P. And since this arrow is in the counterclockwise direction, it's positive. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Sure. Uh, some, sometimes it's just easy to break this down individually. It's just that it takes a lot of uh, space. So I don't I avoid it. But feel free to do this in your rough work if you that's easier. Okay, let's simplify this equation. Okay, I'm just going to write down to my notes. I think I, what I get is m equals minus 3x plus 30. Okay, we just one step from drawing the shear, uh, the bending moment diagram. We need to draw the beam from the section from uh, between cut the section between D and B. So draw all the forces. 15, six, again, draw V, M. Let me clear these things up. Down. Okay. I remember that this is two. This is also two. And for all practical purposes, we take x to be the distance from the cut all the way to the origin. And so now with that, 
we are ready to write the equation for equilibrium for moments. So we have M about this point P equals M, which is clearly counterclockwise. The 12 produces a clockwise moment of uh, 12X. Now for 15, we have 15 and six act in the same direction. So they'll produce a similar moment, which would be counterclockwise. We just need to figure out the moment arm. So for 15, it would be X, as you can see, minus two, because X minus two is a distance from the place where 15 acts, which is here, all the way to this point P. And as I said, it's going to have a positive sign, same as the one before, because of the same reasoning. And then we have six, uh, and the distance from six force to P is going to be X minus four. All that equals zero. And so simplifying this will give me M equals minus nine X plus 54. So let me circle all the, or box all the equations which we have so far, because those will be used. So we have this equation, this equation, and this equation. Okay, so now based on these three equations, I need to draw the shear force, uh, sorry, bending moment diagram. So all I do is draw a similar axis as before. And somewhere here. Let's draw A, B, C, and D. A is here. B is, uh, C is here. D is somewhere here. D. And then B is there. Okay. So what I do now is I look at the first equation m equals 12x. So that's saying that as X goes from zero to two meters, uh, the, the moment M will go from zero all the way to 12, 12 times two, which is 24. So I should have a hard time with this software. that's 24. And this equation here is going to be M equals 12 X. Thereafter we have uh, M equals minus three X plus 30. In fact, you can check this. If you put X equals two, you'll get minus six plus 30. So 30 minus six is 24. So it's actually starts over here at X equals two, this equation, second one. And then we need to go all the way to X equals uh, four, right? That's where D is. So if you put X equals four in the second equation, we have minus three times four, which is uh, 12. So 30 minus 12 is uh, 18. So this is going to be the uh, second point right here at 18. Now the question is how will you join these points from C and D? You can look at this equation, it's linear in X, which means that you just have to draw a straight line. So in general, for a straight line, you just need to identify two points and then connect the two points through a straight line. Finally, we have minus nine X plus 54. You can, if you want verify, if you put X equals four, you should see that the M is equal to 18. And since it's linear from uh, here all the way to B, and I know for a fact that the moment at B is zero, it's safe to connect the two. Or you can verify, you can put X equals six and check if M is actually equal to zero. This is 18, this is 24. So that is the bending moment diagram. Okay, so. Professor, can you go over yeah. again? How did you come up with like 24, 18 and zero? Sure, so let's. Let's, I forgot to write the equation. So the equation for this, is minus three X plus 30. The equation for this is minus nine X plus 54. So use this equation, you can put X equals, this is two, or rather could be the two comma zero, use a different pen. 
So this point is two comma zero. This point is four comma zero. This point is six comma zero. So all I do is in this equation, I put X equals uh, two. So if I put X equals two, I get 24. And then in, in uh, to, get, to get point D, this 18, I put X equals four, which is this coordinate of this point. And that comes out to be 18. And similarly, if you put X equals six in this equation, you get uh, the moment at B equals zero. That's how you get it. So professor, so, so you are just putting the numbers where our forces are acting. So at two millimeter or 15 Newton force acting at four, six Newton, and then at six, we have another force acting. So you just the end points where our force is acting. Yes. So that's, that's, so that's where the, yeah. So the point I'm trying to make here is that you need to find the, in order to draw these diagrams, you need to draw the bending moment shear force but you need to find the force at every single location. But the trick is that uh, you don't really need to do that. Whenever you see that the force changes or the moment changes, that's where you need to apply those equations. So it's kind of easy to do that uh, once you understand that it's only these places where the force is act is there's going to be a discontinuity, discontinuity in the derivative, which means that the force, the forces, the moments are still continuous, but there's a change in the slope. So it's, so it's just, you do more problems and you understand that that's what comes. Um, it, you don't have to do it at, you, know, you don't have to do it at every single location. You just do it based on points where the forces change. Okay, so I'm going to show you actually a trick to simplifying how you do this, this uh, bending moment diagram. It's, it's the harder one because you need to write these equations, but there's a trick where you can use um, these equations, I think I wrote it down here. You can use this, these formulas to actually simplify uh, the computation of these diagrams. It's, it's actually kind of a uh, easy way to do it. I'm, I'll just, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So assuming that you already have the, just, you already have drawn the shear force diagram. I'm going to show you a trick to draw the bending moment diagram uh, based on the shear force diagram using those equations. It's, that's the graphical trick, which I'll show you in a bit. You just correct this, put this figure again, and then I should be all set to go. Oh, I just cut this. It's terrible. Is it a paste special? Oh, there it is. Okay, that looks good. Okay, I'm going to take this on the next page. Let me take. Okay, so I'm going to show you another way of solving for the bending moment diagram without using any of these equations. Okay, so you actually don't need the whole work, worked out thing. I just, for completeness, I'm just putting it there. So I'm going to call this another way. Another method to draw pending moment diagram. Okay, so this method is based on this fact that the equation for uh, the, there's the equation relating M and V, which says that dm dx equals V, which essentially is copied from here. D, so dm dx equals V, I just copied it here. So we have dm equals V dx. And then if you integrate this equation between any two points, let's call this points one and two, 
Okay, so one and two are some points in the three body diagram uh, of this beam, right? So one and two could be, for example, A, C, D, and so on. Then M2 minus M1 equals integral to one B dx. But you know, if you remember this from calculus that this is area under V X curve from one to two. That's the that's the property. That's from calculus. Okay. So what it's saying is that the moment the difference in the moments from sections two and one is actually the area under the curve from one to two. Okay. So what we do is we just find the area under the curve for the V X for the V X plot. So let's do that. It's pretty simple. So first of all, we need to find the area under this uh, rectangle. It's you can see the height is twelve. The width is two, so the area is plus, so it's 12 times two, which is 24. Okay, here we have a minus three for the height of the rectangle, and we're looking at this rectangle, and the width is two, so it's going to be minus three times two, which is six. And then we have for here, we have, uh, this rectangle, last one, is minus nine times the width, which is two, so that's minus 18. Okay, so we have found the area for the different rectangles in the VX plot. Now let's draw the uh, bending moment diagram. Professor. Yeah. From uh, C to D, won't it be minus six? Yeah, it is minus six. Oh, minus six, yeah, good, good catch. Okay, so let's draw the Ending moment diagram. Let's put points A, C, D, and B. Okay. And now all we do is uh, so let's start at A. At A, since in the beam you see that there's no bending moment at A, right? Because you know the equations of equilibrium that at A we only have VA and HA and, and there's no M. So the, the moment at A is uh, equal to zero. Now to find the moment at C, we use this equation MC minus MA equals the area from A to C VDX, which is essentially copy pasting this formula, but substituting the values for sections one and two. But the area for between A and C, we just compute it. It's actually 24. Okay. Since the moment at A is zero, it tells me that the moment at C is 24. So we have 24. That's it. So that's how you get the point C, moment at C. If you wanted to find the moment at some other point, all you have to do is you need to find the equivalent area. So for example, if you want the moment in between A and C, you'll basically draw that corresponding rectangle here and then find the area and then do it just using this formula. So let's complete this. So we found the moment at C. Let's find the moment at D. It's MD minus MC equals integral from C to D, B, DX. Okay, so the area from C to D, we've computed to be minus six. It's minus six. The moment at C, we already computed, that's 24. So MD can be computed to, as 24 minus six, which is 18. So the point, the moment at C is 18. We can draw a straight line and the straight line is because we know that since we have V dx, V is constant, right? We know that the shear force is constant between C and D. So the relation, so this thing is going to be a linear function of X because when we integrate this expression, V will come out, it'll be integral of dx, which is X. And so there's some linear underlying function between C and D and that's why I drew a straight line and not draw a curve. But the endpoints come from the area. And then finally, we have for B, so this is 
for B for B you will write M B minus M B equals integral V dx from uh, B to B, which we found as minus 18. So M B is unknown. M D is known, it's 18. And then we have minus 18. So if you can compute that the moment at B is simply zero, which is what we expected. There's a roller at B and there's no moment. There. So just join these by a straight line. And that's it. So, so that completes the shear force, sorry, bending moment diagram without really doing much work, but just using the area of the, uh, of the triangles. And as I said, this is a straight line because V is constant, it will come out. And when you integrate, you get a function of X. So there's an underlying linear function there. 